Today, we're looking at a red ink from Faber-Castell Garnet. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. There's timestamps down below so that if you want to skip around, you can. But if you got the time, check out the entire video. You can follow me over on Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Retro 51 Tornado with a broad nib. I wrote with it for a day and used it to take the notes for this video. I standardized my first writing sample by using Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper on all of the tests that I do. I do use other papers, and some of those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to make sure I keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting, the 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Great red though. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The medium is a little darker than the extra fine, so we're seeing three different tones depending on the nib. We have no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show us a slight bit of color variation in the medium, far left to far right, but it doesn't really show up in the writing. Tomoe River. No bleeding, normal Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 18 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 22 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 13 seconds to dry. The medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby shows us much more color variation because we're not getting it in the writing. But the extra fine, or sorry, the medium shows us uh, quite a bit of color variation, far left to far right. The, me the extra fine shows us a little bit far left to far right, but it's not really showing up in the writing sample. I agree with Vita. I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this kind of weird brown yellowish tone across the bottom. We see a little bit of a purple in there and then a bunch of the red. So there's quite a few dyes here mixing to make this very interesting ink. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And what we really see is that everything except the red is holding fast at that line and not moving, which means for me, I expect on the resistance tests, the red to go away and there to be some weird colors that stay behind. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I wouldn't want to use this in a note-taking situation. Now, the reason is very simple. Look at that lowercase h, completely blown out. I would be afraid to lose things that are important to me. Water's reactivating and lifting the red, just the red. Everything else, all those other weird colors that were showing up are very much still there and I don't know about that. Uh, I just don't think water's got what it takes. In fact, looking at the bleach, I don't, or sorry, looking at the pen flush, I don't think that pen flush has what it takes because it's lifting most all of these colors out of the way, but there's a whole lot of those weird yellows left behind that we don't really see 
from the pen flush very often. Now the one third bleach solution completely obliterates it, takes it entirely off the page. And if you use that, it's not a problem. It's gonna quickly get it out. That was 30 seconds of exposure. But just make sure that you go back and immediately clean your pen with water so that you don't rust your metal bits. I test viscosity or flow by using a tilt test that I've linked in this video. For the inks I've tested, I have found a average viscosity of 2.5 with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Graf von Faber-Castell's Garnet Red has a viscosity of 1.83, making this a much wetter ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those, and what I found is the average dry time is 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Graf von Faber-Castell's Garnet Red has an average dry time of 16 seconds, which is normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Graf von Faber-Castell's Garnet Red, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Now I wanted a nice gray, like a Diamine's Graphite. The next writing sample is done on White Lines, Strathmore Writing Paper, and Canson Bristol. In this writing sample, we're starting out by looking at White Lines paper. White Lines paper is actually gray, but it normally doesn't do well on, with fountain pens. And I keep saying that, and I keep finding inks that do pretty good. Like here, we get really no bleeding, no ghosting. The, this ghosting is much more on camera than it is in person. You really don't see it in person. Now the 1.1 stub has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, it did very well. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 7 seconds to dry. The medium's much darker than the extra fine, right about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 9 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows no color variation, the scrubby of the medium shows some far far left to far right, although it's not in the writing sample. Strathmore writing paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a slightly lighter tone than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, five seconds to dry. The medium is slightly darker than the extra fine, but slightly lighter than the stub. With no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 8 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. The only color variation we seem to get is from the nib. And this is Canson Bristol. No bleeding, no ghosting. Again, the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The medium is darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does have shading spots. Like if you look at the word the, starts lighter, gets darker. Brown starts darker, gets lighter. So there is some shading that occurs with the medium. Nine seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows no color variation and we didn't get any. Scrubby of the medium shows some and we do get some. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Faber-Castell's Garnet? Garnet tends to be one of my favorite reds. This one shades incredibly well. However, quite frequently it's a little lighter than I would prefer. It is a great red ink and it falls right in the category that is some of my favorite reds and it shades well. What nib and pen would best give what nib and pen gives the best writing experience with this ink? I prefer a wet broad pen to really put the ink down and get the shade that works best for me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and if it's your first time here, I'm going to remind you if you enjoyed it Subscribe. Thanks for watching.